This is the De Tommaso Pantera, one of the rarest supercars in the world, and despite it looking amazing, only 350 were produced every year. It was as fast as a Lamborghini Countach, so it had to be aerodynamic, right? I mean, it does have a cool rear wing and a nice louver, but are they just for show? To find out, I simulated it with and without these features. And a quick shout out to the person who funded these simulations, Roland. Thank you. Surprisingly, there's a lot to be impressed about with this original version. For example, the front, like all cars, has a zone where the air has to decelerate, and that comes with increased pressure and drag. But the Pantera really minimizes this area by pinching the nose and making it sharper. That makes the car more aerodynamic than a lot of cars these days, and even supercars. Likewise, the hood is really nice because it's angled, but it isn't rounded. The benefit of that is the flow doesn't accelerate too much, and the reason why they can get away with not rounding the front is because the nose is sharp. That slow or moving flow over the hood helps keep the pressure higher, which reduces the lift produced and hence makes the car more stable at high speeds. Perhaps one weakness of this car is the windshield. It is a very different angle to the hood, which means that the air slams into it, dumps a lot of its energy into it, and then has to flow over. That comes with much higher pressure here, which is great in that it increases the downforce, but it also produces a lot of drag, and that downforce production is very inefficient. Then, the sharp angle of the windshield creates another sharp angle at the roof, but unlike the sharp angle between the hood and the windshield, this sharp angle makes the flow accelerate, and that now produces low pressure. That's bad for downforce. So overall, this windshield isn't great because it produces downforce inefficiently and produces lift later on, which makes it even more inefficient. When you produce downforce, you want to pay as little as you have to to the drag. So just angling the hood more would have helped a lot here. The rest of the roof is fantastic because the flow stays attached and the boundary layer doesn't grow too much. That is partly because at the rear of the Pantera's roof, there is this cutout, which looks sweet, but it also produces a little low pressure. So that helps suck the flow over the roof and keeps it moving faster. That low pressure, of course, also produces lift, but in this case, it might be warranted because the fast moving flow now hits the rear wing. So in effect, it is feeding the rear wing with more energy to work better. We will need to see later how much of a difference this rear wing makes to the downforce and if it was worth it. Perhaps the most impressive thing is the diffuser, because look at how aggressive it is, and the fact that you got the exhaust pipe sticking out, but still the flow just kicks up a little. It's not perfect, but for the time, this was very advanced. That diffuser alone would be producing a lot of downforce, and it also reduces the wake size a lot, which helps reduce the drag. I mean, this wake size is smaller than most cars up to about 2010, so the styling of this car was super advanced. Even at the front, the spoiler slash chin spoiler was really good in that by pointing it forward a little, it blocks off the highly curved streamlines from going underneath the car, and that means that there is less flow separation over the edge. One way to improve this even more would be to simply round that edge a little more. The rest of the underbody is really good, the flow is clean and the pressure is low, so that is good for downforce production. From on top, we see some really good error because that cutout doesn't have much of a wake. This is a really tricky region to get right, and it's important to do so because the rear wing is right behind it, and any poor quality flow will negatively impact this wing. But here, we see that the cutout has a tiny wake, so the flow going into the wing is really good. How did De Tommaso achieve that? They did it by sloping the sides in and making the louvre angle down a little. That helps swing the flow inwards and take up much of that wake region. One negative side effect of doing this is that the pillars supporting the wing now see angled flow, and that makes their wakes larger. A way to reduce these wakes would be to make these supports more airflow-like and not flat plates. That way, they would be less sensitive to the flow's angularity. Another really important thing about the Pantera is that the A-pillars are quite sharp, but the flow still stays attached over them very nicely. They achieve that by sloping the A-pillars so much so the sharp angle is reduced. This shows the vortices coming off the car, and it is really a tale of two halves because the front half of the car is really good. There are no A-pillar vortices, the side mirrors are really good, and only the front wheels produce vortices, which can't be helped. But then, the rear performs poorly. The general back produces so many vortices, then the wing itself produces strong wingtip vortices, despite having end plates. So that shows that these end plates aren't that well designed. However, one highlight back here is that the rear wheels don't produce that many or large ones either. That is likely because the rear wheels get flow from the front wheels, so that incoming flow is less coherent, and so larger vortices get mitigated. These streamlines show just how much the flow over the rear of the roof dives down and goes underneath the wing. I wonder how much of a difference the Louvre makes to the flow, so let's remove the Louvre and see how that affects the flow here. This plane shows that without the Louvre, the flow still dives down underneath the wing, but not as much as when there is one guiding the flow. From on top, the flow is much less ordered without the Louvre, because you can see how the low velocity regions poke out every now and then, whereas with the Louvre, the low velocity region is just one straight line. These streamlines show that without the Louvre, the flow skips over the rear cutout a little more, and in terms of the drag coefficient, removing the Louvre actually drops it from 0.0. 0.34 to 0.33. So that's good, but the lift coefficient is affected way more because with the Louvre, it produces 5.3 kilos of downforce, but without it, it produces 2.7 kilos of lift. So that little slat is doing a lot for downforce production. And speaking of downforce, how much does the rear wing affect the downforce? To find out, we also simulated it without the rear wing, and these are the results. From the side, 
Without the rear wing, the wake is much smaller, and that makes sense because if you look at the rear wing one, the rear wing produces downforce, so it kicks the flow up. As such, the flow over the back will flow up more too, and that produces a larger wake. Without the rear wing, you don't get that, and the flow can stay attached much better and angled down more. That comes with a much smaller wake, and that wake size is now really impressive. It's about as large as regular cars these days. And because there is no rear wing, we don't get quite as low pressure over the rear, so that helps offset the lack of downforce produced. From on top, we see something really interesting in that without the rear wing, the wake from the cutout is larger. So the rear wing seems to either squash the wake further into the cutout, or help pull the flow down into this region, which the side plane shows is also happening. From the drag, these orbits show the amount produced in red. The front half of the car is most unaffected but the rear is affected in a few ways first the cutout actually seems to produce slightly less drag because you can see towards the rear of the car there is less however that might be because the drag from the wing and the struts are also there around the rear sides there is a little less drag too and that could easily be because without the rear wing the wake is straighter and less flow is coming over the underside and that reduces the drag as a result without the rear wing the drag coefficient drops from 0.34 to 0.30 a 40 count reduction, which is huge. But the lift gets really bad because with the rear wing, the car produces 5.3 kilos of downforce, but without it, it produces 7.6 kilos of lift. So a 13 kilo swing. So this rear wing not only looks great, but it works incredibly well too. And that can be said of the entire car in general. Peace out amigos.